let's sort of wrap things up here with a third question. It's from the chapter in Dinesh's book and it's entitled, Does God Hate Amputees? And he'll explain a little bit about where that comes from. But the point being, if God is so loving, God is so kind and gracious, why doesn't He heal the amputee? Why doesn't He do miracles? Why don't we see more of the supernatural power of this God in our day of which we live? Asking the question, listen to this response. We'll be right back. This question about what God has done to the amputees came up in a recent debate I had with a leading atheist. And in the question-answer session, somebody jumped up and said, why does God hate amputees? Uh, the question kind of took me by surprise. I kind of looked to see, and I'm, am I liking, looking at somebody who's like missing his arms or missing his legs? But no, the guy was perfectly able-bodied, but he was obviously inconsolable over the plight of the amputees. Uh, and it turns out that the atheists even have a website, why does God hate amputees, and so on. They consider this to be a great trump card against God. Uh, the fact that God has created beings that are uh, due to accidents, people have lost their arms or legs, and God doesn't heal them. Now, right away, you know, we've got to step back for a moment and say, wait a minute, you know, all this sort of, why doesn't God do this and why doesn't God do that? The first question we have to ask, uh, you know, in, in all honesty, is what rights do we have against God? Uh, in other words, what, does God have an obligation to give us X, Y, or Z? Um, you know, one way to look at it is to sort of say like this, you know, human beings live for 85 years. Now, an elephant may live for 200 years. Is God wronging human beings vis-a-vis -vis the elephant? Or to put it differently, uh, dogs live for only 15 years, and, and houseflies may live only for a few days. Uh, is God being unjust to the housefly as compared to the human? All of this, I think, is an almost absurdist line of reasoning, because... When God is creating in his plenitude, in, the, in his great, you may say, uh, fecundity, all types of creatures with different characteristics, in some senses, every creature is better off for existing than it would if it didn't exist. So since, in a sense, God is giving us everything we have, and by the way, God owes us nothing. We've not done anything for him that makes it obligatory on him to give us two arms or two legs or whatever. The fact of the matter is almost all of us are on net ahead of the game. Even the guy who has one arm and one leg is better off because he has one arm and one leg than if he had no arms and no legs. So the point I'm trying to make is that you know, we, if we look at life, we see that people cling to life. Even the amputee in the wheelchair, even the old guy who's 94 years old and very feeble, and to many of us it may seem like, gee, you know, what do you have to live for? But don't ask him that, because he's hanging on to life. It's still worth it for him. He wants to live another day, another week, another year if he can. So on the balance, we're ahead of the game. Now, having said all that, uh, there's no question that people who have accidents, amputees, they suffer. Um, but how much do they suffer? Uh, you know, it seems odd, obviously to us who are observers that their suffering is uninterrupted and constant and never ends and so on. But there have been studies of this, and I report in my book, God Forsaken, uh, studies that look at people who have become paraplegics, for example, uh, and are now in a wheelchair. Uh, and there's, uh, what these studies do is they measure their self-reported, their own reports of happiness, um, right after the incident uh, that made them a paraplegic, then say a few weeks later, six months later, and say a year or two later. And what's really interesting is that while people's level of happiness plummets, upon the immediate aftermath of some disastrous accident, let's say, their happiness returns to almost normal in a very short time. So when you come and see, for example, the guy in the wheelchair a year later, uh, it turns out that he doesn't spend all day thinking about himself in the wheelchair. Uh, he spends his day now worrying about what's on special at the local restaurant and what he just saw on TV and why his kid refuses to study. In other words, everyday concerns return just as they were there before. Um, and, is, and levels of happiness, this shows the incredible human ability, uh, the ability of, of humans to adjust both the circumstances in which our fortunes go up but also to circumstances in which our fortunes go down. So the bottom line of it is if you actually talk to amputees, most of them find life well worth living, uh, just like the rest of us. Uh, and so the idea that sort of God has wronged them in some terrible way is not only philosophically incoherent, it's even sociologically wrong.